Greetings, kind sir. Blessed by God's grace. I agree with everything that you're advertising here. Yeah? I just think the solution is different. What's the solution, do you, do you think? Kingdom. Jesus, Jesus, the one he talked about. The gospel. That's, that's yeah, what I'm here yeah, preaching. The kingdom. Uh, that's the soul, that's going to end all this stuff, this craziness uh, that you've been mentioning. I've been listening to you. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> Crazy people don't even know what, <laughs> they think they can just change their, yeah. their gender. Uh, abortion, strict murder, what mm -hmm. it is. I mean, come on. I wish, well, I wish people would act like it. I wish Christians would act like it, and they don't. And they don't. Must, must they're, they're in two camps. They're polarized. They're split. They're divided. Some groups say, oh, you know, let a woman choose. Let, let people choose what the, if they want to be uh, male, female, bi, all this stuff. It's just yeah. crazy. It's insane. Do you, do you know where you stand before God, kind sir? Oh, yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Or I mean, if you were to die today, where do you think you'd go? Well, I'd be dead. Well, you, well you're, I mean, you're, I, mean you're, I would be asleep. Your physical body would be I, dead. I, yeah, right. Well, by your soul. The, the Bible uses the term sleep for death. Uh, remember when yeah. Lazarus, yeah. I know you know the scriptures because I yeah. can hear you quoting them over here. So when Jesus uh, went to, uh, told his disciples about Lazarus uh, had dying, his friend Lazarus, mm -hmm. they were, they were uh, uh, a journey away and Lazarus had been dead four days, the Bible says, the, the gospel account. So Jesus says, uh, we're gonna, he's gone to sleep, let's go wake him up. And, uh, and the scripture says the disciples thought he was talking about sleeping, like yeah. we go to sleep every night. Jesus said, the man died. Let's go, let's go, we're going to wake him up. So... What about yourself? Well, so, so if I died today, mm -hmm. it was a car accident, a stroke, my mm -hmm. doctor says I could do that, I could have that at my age. So uh, then I would be asleep, waiting, for what Jesus said. He says, the hour is coming when, when I'll call the dead out the, the resurrection. Basic Bible teaching. So, uh, you know, I have faith that God's kingdom is the only solution. It's gonna solve all these issues that you have here. And, uh, and well, that's the answer to the, what people call the Lord's Prayer. I don't know what you call Matthew 6, 9, and 10, but it's the one that says, Jesus told his followers, Pray this way, mm -hmm. our Father in heaven, let your name be sanctified, let your kingdom come, let your will be done. Not in heaven. It's already done in heaven. Mm -hmm. On earth, as in heaven. One of these days, this earth will be a place with no, none of this crazy moral stuff. Yeah. God's standards for morality are right in that book. I mean... Are you, are you Jehovah's Witness? Oh, yeah. So tell tell me, um, what's your name, by the way? Uh, Jerry. Nicholas. Yeah, Nicholas. Pleased to meet you, Jerry. Yeah, my M pleasure. Mr. Jerry. My pleasure. You got a camera uh, and everything. Uh, yeah, I want to respect your your, your as my elder, um, Mr. Jerry. Um, you young people don't respect their elders anymore. So. Oh, well, they don't, I, yeah, <laughs> the whole world's changed. I own a business for many years. Young people don't want to work anymore. I I hear that quite a bit, actually. They don't want to work anymore. Absolutely. They they haven't really been taught. Well, and, they haven't been taught. And. Maybe. Uh, anyway. Tell me, um, even briefly, tell me, Mr. Jerry, why, uh, why, why would you say you're a Jehovah's Witness? Well, uh, it came started back in the 70s. Is that is that well, what that, that, that's when it started? The Jehovah's Witnesses, or no, when no, you're, no, when you're no, I started. With oh no, no, it started. Sorry, I first <laughs> your, met, your journey. I okay. first met Jehovah's Witnesses in the 70s. Okay. And I uh, was a young bachelor guy, hair down on my shoulder. Smoking pot every day. Oh, the, drunk, the 60s movement. Getting drunk every day. Yeah, yeah. that's when I, that's where I was uh, uh, raised. Was in the 60s. Got okay. out of high school in 65. Okay. So I'm 76 now. So anyway, uh, I met this uh, guy, one of Jehovah's Witnesses, and I said to him, "Hey, I got a question for you, dude. You're not nice guy." Yeah. I said, "You know, I mean, I was raised as a Baptist. Okay. So my my question was." I don't know who Jesus Christ is. I, he's he's God or the Son of God. Okay, the, my church can't figure that out. They, I mean, the church I was raised in, okay. whether Jesus was fully, we used to say, mm. have the same fully God, fully man. Mm -hmm. In other words, that he was God incarnate in the flesh. So that Jesus, so, but I said, so I know who Jesus is. I've heard of Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, St. Paul, all these guys. Who is Jehovah? I said, that. Where did you guys get that name? Did, did you make it up? Did, 
and so he opened his Bible to Psalm 83:18, and it was King James Bible because mm -hmm. I went and got mine. And sure enough, Psalm 83:18 right there. And it's a, that's an old Bible, 1611. Mm -hmm. That's a 400-year-old Bible. Yes. And uh, so here, here's what it looked like. I got the King James right here. Let me just show you this thing. You, you might enjoy this. I actually got, I actually got one here too. Oh. Okay. Uh, King James Bible. If for yeah. those who don't have a Bible. Right. I heard you offering the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's nice. People need it. Yes, but, they do. Yes, sir. Okay. So. I got two or three different translations here. So here's our Bible. Here's our Psalm. You said Psalm. 83. 83. This is the scripture that showed me, and this was like 45. This was in 1975. 83, 18. So he opens his, he says, well, let me show you. So okay. he opens his Bible. He okay. showed me just this one scripture. 83. There's Psalm 83. Uh, let me see if I can, I got all the light in the world. Psalm 83:18, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, I love the Psalms, of course. Everybody does. And verse 18 is what he showed me. And because I said my question was, remember my, what my question was? My question was, who's Jehovah? Where did you guys mm -hmm. get that name? So, Psalm 83:18. Uh, uh, this is a different modern translation. Uh, this is the oh. uh, New American Standard what Bible. You got the New American, New American Standard. Standard Bible, yes, sir. Right. It says that they may know that you alone, whose name is the Lord, are the most high over all the earth. All right. Now, here's the American Standard. Mm -hmm. The American Standard was the original Bible in that series. There's been three of them. Mm -hmm. in, in 1901, the American Standard Bible was produced by the American Translation Committee, all the experts from different religions. And I've got it here, too. Can't get yeah, the it. ASV American Standard Version. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay, heard. it's the original American Standard. Now, yeah. 1952 came the Revised Standard Version, yes. the RSV. Yeah. Yes, sir. That's when it said this. But here's what the original said. Well, here's what the <clears throat> King James says. Uh, a couple of translations. King James Version: That men may know that thou whose name alone is, and I like the King James because it capitalizes it. I don't know if you can see that very well. Actually, the NASB does that as well. Capitalize uh, God's name, yeah, Jesus' yeah, name. all capital. Yeah. This is King James Bible. It says, whose name alone is Jehovah, art the most high over all the earth. So that's the 1611 uh, King James William Tyndale said that's the name that belongs there. The Lord is not a name, that's a title. Uh, it's like your landlord. That's his title. And in England, they got these guys called lords. Yeah. You yes. know, the guys in the. So that makes no sense because it says, whose name is the Lord. That's not a name. My name's Jerry. You got a name. Your cat's got a name. Your dog. You... Here's, the, here's the American Standard Version. This is the Bible from 1901. I have a couple copies of it in my collection. American <laughs> Standard Version. And this was the Bible that was made to replace the King James for Americans. If you, if you get one of these Bibles and read the preface, it says, the American Revision Translation Committee has produced this Bible for Americans mm -hmm. uh, and to correct some problems with the King James, which is what everybody used at the turn of the century. Yes. Here's the American Standard Version. That they may know that thou alone whose name is Jehovah, art the Most High over all the earth. So, same as the King James, uh, but all the modern Bible, but when they, when, when, when in 1952, the same committee, except all the original guys were dead from 1901, now all these new scholars took Jehovah's name out of that Bible all 7,000 times. All 7,000 times that the Tetragrammaton, that's what it's called, those Hebrew letters, you've seen them before. Mm -hmm. It's called the Tetragram. That's what the scholars call it. And so, in, in uh, all these, in all the Bibles you buy in the Bible store today, it's the Lord did this, the Lord did that, 
Psalm 23, most, probably the most famous psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. Mm -hmm. That's not what the Hebrew Bible says. The Hebrew Bible says, Jehovah is my shepherd. So the Tetragrammaton, which is a personal name, and in English, the most popular way to say it is Jehovah. That started in uh, the 12th century. Some people prefer Yahweh. Yeah, I know you've heard people say, it. Yes, sir. oh, it's Yahweh's more accurate uh, to say. And I'm fi we're fine with that. But we chose Jehovah because that's English. That's how you pronounce that tetragrammaton. Do you, do you have a uh, Jehovah's, Wit uh, the, or Jehovah's Witness Bible? Um, yes. Like, I don't know if I actually have a copy. I have a, a Book of Mormon. But uh, one one thing, and maybe I can get your... Um, and you've probably heard this brought up before. Now, probably not by many Christians, because Christians in this country don't know the Bible that well. Yeah, they don't. They're which not is, Bible readers. Which is very sad. Yeah, they're, 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 not, they're not Bereans who examine the Scriptures daily. Hey, okay, there you go. To see whether these things are so. Yeah, the Bereans were smarter than the Thessalonians. Uh, they, they, well, they, they, the they, they weren't lazy. Daily. You know, and said they received the word with eagerness, and yes, right. and we're not like, like the Bereans. Like one, um, can you get your thoughts on this. What do you think um, that? And then this is one reason I was asking for uh, the Jehovah's Witness uh, version of the Bible was because I think I've looked at it before. But it's, uh, well, one, do Jehovah's Witnesses believe? I, I I believe they believe this, but I'll just I'll ask you to confirm it. Do they believe that Jesus is God? That, that um, I mean, you mentioned earlier about him being God and man. Um, yeah, that's he was God incarnate. It's called the Trinity. So, he, so I do. Would you say Jehovah's Witnesses, Jehovah's Witnesses, believe that Jesus um, is God? No, he's the Son of God. That's what Peter said. Remember, Jesus said, "Who do the people say I am?" And they gave him all the answers. And Jesus said to Peter, who, "Peter, who do you think? Who do you say I am?" He says, "You are the Son of the Living God." So it's, we know what a father and a son is. You might even have a son. I don't know. I got one. But uh, fathers and sons, are not, I, they're not the same. And plus, just think, uh, I ra was raised in a Trinitarian church that said yeah. Jesus was the same person as Jehovah. He just has a different name in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, he was called Jehovah. But... And he was fully God. That was the phrase we, we used to have, the Athanasian Creed. Mm -hmm. You ever heard of that? Mm -hmm. It says, the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Ghost is God. I can still recite it from childhood. Mm -hmm. Father is God, Son is God, Holy Ghost is God. Father is Almighty, Son Almighty, Holy Ghost Almighty. Uh, Father is eternal, Son is eternal. Uh, and then uh, at the end it says, they are co-equal, co-powerful, and co-eternal. That's the Athanasian Creed. That's the tr that's the Trinity that the Catholic Church had for all those centuries. It was developed in uh, the Council of Nicaea. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you've heard of that. Yes, that was sir. a big council back in about the year 420 or something like that. And that's when uh, the, 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 the church, led by a, a Roman emperor, a guy a Caesar named Constantine, uh, and he's the guy that uh, changed, that accepted Christianity, stopped persecuting Christianity, mm -hmm. and then he became uh, a believer in Jesus Christ. His family opposed him, of course. He murdered all them, uh, and he started, our, he unified the Roman Empire <laughs> under, right. like, you know what? under the... Uh, the belief in Jesus Christ, accepting Christianity as the Roman state religion. That's why the Vatican sits smack dab in the middle of Rome, because that's where the Roman emperor ruled from. He gave them. I mean, they, so, gee, so to answer the question, mm -hmm. Jesus is the Son of God. He's not equal to God. And there's a couple of verses I know you know of. Mm -hmm. When Jesus was dying, his last, one of the last things he said was, my God, my God, why? Thou forsaken me. Yes. That's, what, that's what the King James will say. Uh, okay, like one. Um, and so, so yeah. if he called out to God with his dying breath, why? What? My. And he said, "My God, my God, why have you forsaken me?" So Jesus has a God because he called out to him. 
And then he was, when he was resurrected, Mary, Mary comes to the tomb. Yeah. and thinks he's the gardener. I bet you I bet you know this account. It's in uh, John chapter 21. Mm -hmm. And so Mary is one of the disciples that came to the tomb and the, the tomb was open. And the body's gone. So he she's looking all over this garden, the garden of Gethsemane where he's where the he was buried, I think. So anyway, she sees a man and thinks he's the gardener. John 21 says, mm -hmm. she assuming, I'm just quoting now, she assuming he be the gardener said, where have you laid him? Because she had some spices and things that they did that. And what, what uh, Jesus told that woman in John 21, where, what, which verse is it? Hang on a second. Hang on, let me see if I can get it here. John chapter 20. Is it 20? Okay. Yeah, yes, sir. Sure, you get your 70s carry I used yeah. to know all these scriptures exactly, but uh, let's see here. Uh, I'll just, I would like to compare it with this. This mm -hmm. is not a Bible I use mm -hmm. because it doesn't have Jehovah's name in it. They took it out. But uh, here we go. John chapter 20. Are you talking about what he said to her? How he responded and, to her? Well, how he responded to the woman because uh, she said, she, assuming he's the gardener, mm -hmm. you probably found that part. Yeah, it's, it says, and this is how, what he said to her. Um, Jesus said to her, Stop clinging to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I ascend to my Father and, and your Father, and my God and your God. Okay. Jesus tells this woman, first of all, this, this woman who knows Jesus, she's a disciple. Mm -hmm. I'm going... Go tell the brothers, go tell my disciples, I am going home to my God and your God. In other words, Mary's God is also Jesus' God. Jesus worships God too. So he's not God. Well, there, there's a... Um... So, so anyway, that's what we believe. Yeah. But I respect, if a Trinitarian comes up and says, I believe that Jesus is the creator in the flesh. He came down here in the flesh, he died for us, paid at his perfect life. I, re I respect the perverse right to believe that. I even um, respect these yeah. jerks. These people <laughs> that say, uh, oh yeah, I think if a woman feels like she can't handle having a baby, just, just, go, just go aboard it. You know what? I respect the person's right to believe whatever they want to. We get to choose. We get to do that. But I totally disagree with it. Mm -hmm. that's, that's out and out murder. Uh, yeah. do, do you think, do you think, Mr. Jerry, do you think there are scriptures that affirm Jesus' deity, that he that he's equal with no. God? No, I don't think I don't think so. Can, can I share some with you? I, well, I know some of the scriptures. In fact, I've had, I've had this conversation many times. Oh. And it's so hard. Sure you probably have. If you're a diet and true Trinitarian, I'll mm -hmm. tell you what, that is such a stumbling block. You're going to hang in. I didn't grow up with it. But, already, <laughs> but I've already, huh? I didn't grow up with it. Yeah, okay. God saved me later in life. Okay, so here Jesus <laughs> calls out. Two times here in the book of John we just read, mm -hmm. my God, my God. So who's he yelling out to? And then telling Mary, I'm going home to my God and your God. Same person. They both have the same God. So Jesus is just what the Bible says he is, son of God. Now I've been all over the uh, John 1.1. 1, 1. Mm -hmm. Many, you know, that, that may be one of the verses that you had there. Uh, many scholars do not translate John 1.1 1, 1 as the word was God. They, they don't translate it that way. Or the, I'm, not, uh, I'm not talking about just Jehovah's Witnesses. I'm talking about yeah. uh, Greek scholars. They say that's, that's an improper translation. Or the, that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Yeah. In verse 14. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, yeah, verse 1 says the word was with God and the word was God. And then it says that the word became flesh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, um, but, the, but but most Trinitarians, mm -hmm. they focus in on the word. The word was God. See, Jesus was was with God. We know that that if you look in the Greek, that God is the Almighty. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. So we understand. Now you agree with me that Jesus was with God. It says right there. Mm -hmm. in the and then it says, but that script, that part that says the word was God, 
that's the Trinitarian's love, favorite scripture because they say, look, it says there, the word, that's Jesus. You know, that's the logos. That's what the Greek word says. The logos hmm. was God. But the, does the Jehovah's Witness Bible, does it say that the word was, was um, that the word was with God and the word was a God? Yes. So that's, so it, that's the proper translation. So it, it says that he's a God then, right? Well, yeah, but the Bible calls Satan a God. Second Corinthians 4, 4 says he's the God of this world. So the word God is another title, and it's in the Bible. There are 43 different e deities in the Bible. 43 different deities called God. So God is just a common title. Uh, it's, it's a common name. It's like man. You're a man. I'm a man. That's not our names. That's our title. Lord is a title. Almighty is a title. Creator is a title. And so is uh, what you just mentioned there. Uh, God, uh, these are all titles. The personal name of God is unique. And uh, so those scholars back in the beginning. Uh, what, do you, what do you think about John chapter 8, verse 58, where he says, well, this is the, the Jews responding to him, starting in verse 57. It says the end of chapter 50, the end of chapter 8 of John yeah. says, So the Jews said to him, You are not yet 50 years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, was born, I am. And then it says, Therefore they picked up stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. And they did that because they knew he was coming to be God. And, and so they said, so, Oh, yeah, that's the John chapter 8, verses. Verse 57, oh, okay. 57 through 59. Right. I'm familiar with this passage. Mm -hmm. So the Jews want to kill Jesus. I mentioned sure they did. And, uh, well, of course. Yeah. But, uh... Because they, they knew he was claiming to be God. They, okay. they believed he was blasphemy. Listen to their argument and, and see who, whose side you want to take. Mm -hmm. The Pharisees and the Sadducees were the enemies of Jesus. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that are, that are confronting him here. And so... And uh, to, add, to, to add to that, Mr. Jury, yeah. in Exodus chapter three, verses four, uh, verse fourteen, that's the that's the title um, God the Father used when Moses asked him, when Pharaoh asked me who sent you, and God told him, I am. Tell him I am sent you, and that's what Jesus said here, I am. So they they knew that he was claiming to be God because that's the same title God the Father used yeah, in Exodus three fourteen. In Greek, uh, used by angels. Angels said the same thing. Uh, as what Gabriel said when he visited Mary. I am Gabriel. Same exact Greek construction. If you look at, if you have an interlinear uh, Bible that, is, that compares Greek with English. Uh, so this term, I am, I know Teresa said that's, that's code for God. That's what. Like, it, like you're saying, I am Jerry or, or me saying I am Nicholas? But, but, that very same, and it said it was just used by Jesus, but it wasn't. It was used by a lot of the Bible. So here's the bottom line. Yes. Everybody is going to take what they want to believe, and they'll have their favorite scriptures. But here, here's maybe a final thought. Mm -hmm. well, I got a lot more than that. So. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and you, and you probably do too. I know you do. <laughs> but I, I can't spend too much time here. Well, you. and that Jesus, like that, that Jesus accepted worship too. Yeah. Several times he accepted worship. Well. Okay, so uh, obeisance is how many Bibles put that word, not worship, but obeisance, because very common to do obeisance. They did it before the Romans, they did it before the governor, they did it before Pilate, and the word, the Greek is proskineo, and it means, if you get a Greek dictionary, that word, which that Bible translates as worship, it puts the word worship in there, as if only God gets worship, we know that. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so because I, the argument is because it says worship here, Jesus must be God. But okay, yeah, because another part but there's of another word, another yeah. Greek word that the king. This Bible says is worship, and that's the word obeisance. And obeisance is a different word. It's the word preskenio in Greek, and it is what you can do to another human with, that you want to show great respect to. So it was very common for people to come up to people that they wanted something from and get down on their knees and give them, obe they would do obeisance 
to the Roman rulers, to anybody in authority, showing their submission. But worship, not the right translation. And, and, and so all you need to, to look in is Bibles that are not produced by Trinitarian people. No wonder they, they, they render those verses like that. And no, no wonder they say the word was God. When scholars, Greek scholars, who have dedicated their whole life to the Greek language say, you know, they've printed Bibles like uh, at the University of Chicago. Uh, uh, Goodspeed, Goodspeed did a wonderful new, new uh, translation of the Greek scriptures. Uh, it's, called the, it's called the American Translation. And he comes to John 1, 1. How does this scholar render John 1, 1? There's two occurrences of the word God there. In the beginning was the word was with God. Now that, that, that word is theos. It's Greek for God, but it's different than the second occurrence. If you look in the Greek Bible, the second occurrence is the word was God. So this guy, Alexander Thompson, for University of Chicago and his partner Goodspeed, none of they're not Jehovah's Witnesses. Mm -hmm. They come to that verse, and guess what they say? I've got, I've got it here. Hold on a second. Let me just. They say, well, you know what I'm going to say. They don't say the word was God. They say we have. Here's what. Here's what the, they say. The word was a God. Mm -hmm. The word was like God. They produced two different translations, these two scholars. These guys taught Greek. One says the word was divine. The other, the other rendered it, the word was a God. Same as the, the Bible that we produce. And so here's the thing. Greek sentence construction. If you have two theoses in this verse, and one has the article, a God and one has and one is without the article and that's what you have in in the, in the Greek text. The first occurrence has the article which literally says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. Now that occurrence of Theos, I have a picture of it here in Greek. Uh, I mean, you know, you can just take it for what it's worth, of course. Mm -hmm. I, I have no, I'm under no illusion that you're going to change and say, oh, now I don't believe in Trinity. <laughs> well, like, like, like how we began the conversation, that's yeah. that's why we must be uh, good Bereans. Next, well, examine the scriptures. The scriptures so that's yeah. commendable. That's commendable that you're... Uh, so I, I, um, I mean, I want to um, listen and, and hear what, what you have to say and yeah. compare it to scripture and... Because I'm wrong on some things, and and you are and you are too respectfully. I say that, and but I hope we both want to know what we're wrong on, so we can be corrected. Well, we both want. To, we want the truth. Yes, sir. I yeah. want the truth. I, That's good. I don't want to. <laughs> and so uh, the. Uh, and uh, and you, I think you know the scripture where Jesus said, "I am the the way, the truth, and the life." Right. Yeah. That's a, that is a good scripture. John fourteen six. Yeah. And the next verse says, no one comes to the Father. But, but by me. Where are we trying to get to? Not Jesus. He's the way. Mm -hmm. He's the door. He once described himself as a door. Remember? Mm -hmm. I am the door yeah. yes, to the, to it, back into God, have a relationship with God. Uh, so Jesus is the door. He's the way. But where, where to? He's, the next verse says, <coughs> no one gets to the Father except through me. We lost the Father in, gar in the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve lost it, of course, because of their disobedience. But Romans 5.12 says, through that one man, sin entered into the world and death has spread to all men because of that sin. So all we know is thousands of years of death. People live, they live and they die. But Jesus promised everlasting life. He says, in fact, uh, John 17, 3 was a prayer to, that he was praying to God. And in that prayer, he said, Father, he said, uh, this means everlasting life if people will take in knowledge of you and of the one you sent forth, Jesus Christ. But he called God, he called God something there. 
uh, when in that John 17 3 well it'll be right there but he called God in his prayer verse 3 17 chapter 17 is what it is and this is his final prayer before he was arrested his last prayer and... okay I'm curious I got the rendering here <laughs> And, and you may know this, but I'll just put it out there. This is, from what I have read on uh, the, the most accurate translations of the Bible, because I, I want the most accurate translation of the Bible. Of you course, know. yeah. And the, this, uh, the, in it, the American Standard Bible, which is what I use, is the most literal word-for-word -word translation that we have. And well, it doesn't have Jehovah's name in it. It doesn't have a name for God. It's always the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. But if you get... A, if you get some research material, mm -hmm. like for instance, Strong's Concordance is in every church library. I bet you, I don't know where. You, I bet you, if you get into a big church library, there's going to be a book there from the 1800s called Strong's Concordance. Mm -hmm. And if you look up, and it's got every Hebrew word, where every scripture is. It's a very thick book, small print. I've got two of them at home. I love to show you. If I wish I had it right here. It gets to the it gets to all these places like Psalm 23 that starts out the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want uh, this one Psalm 83 18 says whose name is the the Lord which is not a name it shows what was in the what was in the original manuscript the the most ancient manuscripts available and there are thousands of Hebrew manuscripts that they've discovered. Uh, Every, and this is uh, Strong's Concordance. It has nothing to do with Jehovah's Witnesses. Mm -hmm. It says the name that is there, every place you read Lord, they, and they always put it in lowercase capitals. I'm sorry, a little coffee there. Uh, they always put it in, in uh, uppercase cap capitals. So if you read uh, any of the verses where, uh, where the name Jehovah occurred in the originals, you'll see it in uppercase capitals. And most Bibles in their forward say, we have, we, well, that's what they said in 1952 when they produced the Bible before this one in the American Standard Version. Mm -hmm. American Standard 1901, 1952 came the Revised Standard Version, which you can still buy. And then uh, I think it was in the 80s that they came out with the new American Standard. But in the 1952, it says, we are removing the name Jehovah from the Bible. We're taking it out. And we're going to substitute it with the word Lord in all capitals. When you see that, it's in the forward. Might be in the forward of that book. Uh, that Bible, it says, when you, see, when you see that, that is where the Tetragrammaton originally appeared. But we, they say, some people say, well, we really don't know how to pronounce the Tetragrammaton. Uh, Jehovah is a popular, it's been used for hundreds of years. We let some like Yahweh. Mm -hmm. uh, Catholics even produce the Bible, the Jerusalem Bible. You can get it online. Everywhere that it says the Lord, they put in Yahweh. Because <laughs> they say God has to have a name. But first thing in the Lord's Prayer is, let your name be sanctified. And the Jews, they have such a reverence for God's name, they won't even say it, speak exactly. it. Exactly, right? they're superstition. Well, and in this country, we, we, we busy ourselves blaspheming his name. All right, all right. Here's the final slide. John 14, Jesus. John 14, 28. Okay, mm -hmm. this this is the reason that I left the Trinity behind. I left it in the dust. The scripture here? Yeah, uh, John 14, 28, Jesus is talking to his disciples. And it all boiled down. When I first had my discussions with Jehovah's Witnesses, and I studied their program, I said, I'm going I'm to give you an hour a week. I met this guy, and I said, I'll give you an hour a week. Mm -hmm. You come to my place. I'll, I'll sit down and I'll study with you for one hour. At the end of the hour, you're gone. <laughs> and I said, I want to know, I, I want to study your teachings. So we have a Bible study program that we offer. We offer it online. And of course, you know, we, we offer free home Bible studies with, mm -hmm. you know, on one-on-one. -on -one. But John 14, 28. Uh, it says, uh, you heard that I said to you, I go away and I will come to you. If you love me, you would have rejoiced because I go to the Father for the Father is greater than I. All right. 
That is another scripture that helped me see that Jesus did not, in his mind, feel he was God incarnate. And that's what we were taught in the Trinity. God in the flesh. And we used to have the same. He's mm -hmm. fully God, fully man. But Jesus is over, has said many times uh, that I am the Father. Uh, well, he says, um, I think that this, the, uh, the, the one where he says, I and the Father are one. Oh, yeah, John chapter 10. I know yeah. that's yeah. too well, yeah. but, but, so here, mm. I want... And, and there, there's another one I want to, I do want to share. Well, share. There, there's many, but... But remember what mm. Jesus said in the scripture you just read. Yeah. The Father is, I'm going to the Father. Mm -hmm. So the Father wasn't there. He, Jesus wasn't the Father. The Father wasn't there. He says, you should rejoice that I am going away to the Father. The Father is greater than I am. That impacted me. If, if I want the truth and you want the truth, there's Jesus and his disciples did not believe that he was Jehovah God, the Almighty. He's the, Jehovah's the creator. Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. That means he's his first creator. I don't know how many angels are out there in this universe. There's got to be a lot of them. Mm -hmm. But Jesus was the first he, that's why he's called the only begotten, and he's begotten. And it, and it, well, I mean, uh, what, is, what does that mean? A couple things on that. Yeah. One, they they did they believed that when he when he rose from the dead, because they went from being sniveling cowards to to being brutally martyred for him. Yeah. Why would they do that if they didn't believe he was God? They didn't believe he was God before. No, they believed that's why they, that's why they ran away like cowards. But then something changed in them after he rose from the dead, well, well, and he, they believed he was if God. Your master rose from the dead that would take your faith to a new level then they were so, willing yeah, to die they had evidence that he was God right there no he's the son of God yeah. he's what he said he is he's the Messiah the Messiah the word Messiah means in, uh, in English it comes out as Christ that's yes, what yes. the word Christ means yes. it means Messiah so and what does the Hebrew word Messiah mean anointed one so he's the anointed he's the anointed of not himself, he's the anointed of God. And that's why Jesus said, uh, you know, Peter, the Father's greater than I am. Uh, you rejo should rejoice that I'm going away to the Father. And then you add that to all those other scriptures where he told Mary, look, Mary, I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. Go tell the brothers I've got it. I'm, I'm leaving. I'm returning back to my Father and your Father and my God and your God. So, so maybe we could discuss. I don't know. See, uh, yeah, that, sorry, the one that I, that I yeah, just mentioned, that's in John chapter 10, I and the Father are one. And after he said, John chapter 10, verse 30, I and the Father are one. Yeah. And then it says the Jews picked up stones again to stone him. You're John chapter and, 10, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, and, that's going to blow over again. Yes, and then it said, it says, um, it says in verse 33, John 10, 33, it says, the Jews answered him, for a good work we do not stone you, but for blasphemy, and because you, being a man, make yourself out to be God. Okay. And so, what did Jesus reply to them? He says, Has it not been written in your law, I said, you are gods? If he called them gods to whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, do you say of him whom the Father sanctified and sent into the world, you are blaspheming, because I said, I am the Son of God? If I do see, he, now what's the correction? Hmm? He, they said, you make yourself equal to God. That's why we're stoning you. And Jesus corrected them by, tell, by quoting to them Psalm 82.1, which says, ye are gods. If you look at that Psalm and in in the, go back there, Jesus was referring them to a scripture where they, in the Old Testament, the elders of Israel were called gods. So, his statement here is a correction of what their view is. Their view is you're making yourself equal to God. And so is it not written in your own law? So he's talking to these Pharisees. He called them gods. Now do you say to me that I'm blaspheming from the I this is, <laughs> To you say to me whom the Father sanctified and, and sent into this world, I blaspheme because I said, who does he say he is? He did not, he contradicted them. 
So let's not take the Pharisees' deal uh, side. Your argument sounds like you're taking the Pharisees' side, and Jesus no, 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 no. is correcting them, saying, "I am." Are you saying I'm blaspheming? He even called your elders back in Psalm 82, one gods, and I'm saying. Verse, right there at the end of verse 36 I am God's son so he corrected them and he told everybody I'm uh, the father's greater than I am so he was God's representative the father sent, dispatched to me I've been dispatched he said he says uh, yeah he says the father sanctified me and sent me into this world so Jesus came on a mission mission was to declare the kingdom. Luke 4.43 says, Jesus said, I'm here to declare the kingdom of God. And so then he told the, the, uh, uh, the Pharaoh, his enemies there, the religious leaders, the kingdom of God has overtaken you, he says. Uh, in other words, and the kingdom will be, will be ripped away from you and given to another nation because they were rejecting him and were going to kill him. He knew his death was he knew that they were going to kill him. He knew all the prophecies about what the Messiah uh, would do. So, so the two reasons he came to the earth, Luke 4, 43, to declare the kingdom of God and then to die. He had to die. He had to give his perfect human life. He was the equal of Adam. Paul, in his writings... His colleague said he was the second Adam. <laughs> you got it. So Paul says there, 1 Corinthians 15, the first Adam was a man a failure mm -hmm. uh, and the second Adam that's Jesus steps into Adam's place mm -hmm. and buys mankind back he owns mankind now he's the redeemer or the ransomer that's what that's what uh, that's what he's called the ransom sacrifice for humans so he gave up willingly his perfect human life and that gives us the opportunity to have ever to come back and, and live forever in God's family. Right now, we're not in God's family. Only dedicated Christians are, but the rest of the world is under the influence of Satan. You see it. You're, you got it right here. There's the evidence. So, <laughs> it's always interesting talking to Trencher here tonight. Well, Christian, yeah. trying to go by the, go, uh, going well, by the Bible. And I know you're not like... Um, Probably not used to talking to many Christians who um, who, who take you through the scriptures, and no, cause, uh, I am not. Because <laughs> I mean, because Christians they don't they don't. Well, the Bible says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, and Hosea. Yeah. So people they they just don't take the time to re study God's well, word. And we read John seventeen three. Jesus prayed to, to his father and said, uh, "Oh, by the way, in John seventeen yeah, he answered your question. You said the Father and I are one from mm -hmm. John chapter 10. Yeah. Yes. And John, in this in this prayer, it's all prayer, John 17. He, in verse 3, he says we can have everlasting life back. What's that say? Verse 3, this means life eternal. So now we can live again forever, not 70 years. Uh, if they do what? Verse 3. They have to yeah. This is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorify What does he call God here? He's praying now. If you look at the first verse, he mm -hmm. raises his eyes to heaven. He's praying to God, right? He calls him what? The only true God. So well, you, but you also Bible, have... You also Jesus is called the God of the Bible. No doubt about that. Satan is called the God of the Bible and all those other false gods that the Philistines, if you've read... If you're a student of the old Hebrew Bible, uh, there were many, many called gods back there. And it's the same exact word. It's, it's uh, in, in, if you're reading Greek, it's, it's Theos. And if you're reading Hebrew, it's Elohim. It's the same word. Satan is called Theos. Second Corinthians 4 4. The God, the God of this, of this world. world has blinded so the minds of the It's just a title. It's just a title. So. And you have Downing Thomas who, when he, when Jesus appeared, in the, he, he reached into his side and after Jesus told him to do that, and he said, my Lord and my God. But you know that Jesus, after, I don't know, maybe you don't know this, mm -hmm. after he was resurrected, when he was, came back in a visible form, mm -hmm. uh, he, uh, 
was he didn't have the same body as he died with. Yeah. Okay, well, look at the evidence. Mary, who knows Jesus very well, she's followed him for this for all three years of his ministry. She comes up to him and says, "Sir, she thinks he's a gardener. He's the same person. I I've only known you for less than an hour, and if you died today somehow this afternoon, and then I saw you out here next week, uh, I would be, I would recognize you. That's mm -hmm. the guy. And I read in the paper that he had an accident and died, and he's back. But she, you know." She doesn't. She knows it's not Jesus. And then, so so it's not Jesus. She thinks he's the gardener, not the same man. He's not the same man. Mm -hmm. he, she would have recognized him. Plus, you, you know the part of the Bible where Jesus walked along with two disciples on yeah. the road. Road to Emmaus. Yeah, you see, I like a guy that knows his Bible. <laughs> Cause, I read it every so, day. So he, he walks along with these two guys for hours. And uh, so he says, hey, uh, what are you guys talking about? And they say, haven't you heard what's going on in Jerusalem? They, you know, they killed the one we thought was going to be the Savior. And uh, so Jesus goes, walks along for several hours with these guys and opens the scriptures to them. The Bible says he opened their hearts wide to understand the scriptures. It was that, that man was not... So, here's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Jesus would, did what many angels did in the Hebrew, in the Old Testament. They manifested human bodies. Gabriel did it with Mary. All of a sudden, here's this man standing there saying, Mary, I've got great news. You know, and they, you know the scripture. He goes and tells her that she's going to bear the Messiah. Abraham visited by three men walking into his camp. And, uh, angels, uh, yeah. and, and so he says, oh, let's get a meal for him, quick. He gets Sarah to start making food for these guys. We're going to invite these guys to sit down. Angels, manifested angels. So angels, angelic creatures, spirit creatures, let's call them, <coughs> have the ability to manifest bodies. This body that Jesus had, because he already gave up his perfect body. He can't take that back. That's what, that's what died there on the torture stake was the perfect human body that pays for Adam's sin. He balances the scale. Adam has lumped sin onto mankind. And if you think of a pair of those old-fashioned scales, Jesus' perfect life, the second Adam, balances it out, and Jesus paid the price. The price was another perfect human life, and no other perfect human has ever lived on this earth other than the first two humans in. They're gone. They lost their perfection. They were kicked out of the garden. So, uh, anyway, uh, so, uh, in, right here in John 17, we read that he calls Jehovah the, the only true God. And then if you look down here in these other, if you read this whole chapter, you would see Jesus say this. Father, watch over my disciples. And it says, because they are all going to be one, just as you and I are one. Now, you brought up John 10, which said, Jesus said, I and the Father are one. What does that mean? Are you married? Mm, no, sir. Okay. At, the poets say they became one. Uh, the, the old wedding vows say the two become one. Mm -hmm. one, so one flesh. The, the, yeah. Right. So the term that they became one, if you and I went in business together, and we and we we work the same, they could say they became one in their business. So Jesus explains in John 17, in his last prayer, two times he says it, Father, all of my disciples will be no part of this world. Just, just as I've commanded them. I'm no part of the world. They are no part of the world. The world will hate them for this. They will all become one. Greetings. Amen. Were you at UMKC the other day? Um, yeah. Uh, I think my friend talked to you. What was you his name? He had like orange hair. Orange hair. Um, like long, longer orange hair. I'm gonna let you talk to these guys. Yeah, okay. if you want to bring by a Jehovah's Witness Bible, feel, ah. feel free. If you want to bring by a Jehovah's Witness okay. Bible, feel free. Okay. Fact, oh. I'm gonna give this to you. This is a very special Bible. I'm gonna tell you Good. what the, you know, Good. when Thank new you. translations come out, this came out in 1952. Yeah. 
when new translations come out, there are groups of scholars that review them and say good or bad. And uh, uh, they'll say it's too literal, uh, the language is wrong. Mm -hmm. So this Bible's been reviewed okay. by the uh, University of Chicago, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, Department of, well, uh, it's, it's been, been, it's been Yale University. <laughs> they, they've reviewed this Bible. Yeah. Uh, I don't have the reviews with me, but I, I, if, but I could give you, the, I could get you the reviews that says the well, New I, World I, Translation I mean, produced by Jehovah's Witnesses is a major uh, 20th century improvement on the King James and on the Bibles that have been produced by religions. Religions produce, if it's a Trinitarian religion, they are going to they are going to have a Bible that says uh, the Word was God. Mm -hmm. Every one of them. But he says if you get Bibles from scholars that uh, that are not, I mean, they're bought and paid for. They can't produce a Bible. It's just like the New International, that very popular Bible. Yeah. New International Version came out without Jehovah's name in it. And so I've got the news release when it came out back in uh, 20 years ago. And they, they announced in the, uh, in the release of this Bible, uh, the, uh, the questions from the press is, there is the, is, you know, they're comparing it with other translations, why is Jehovah's name, why is the Tetragrammaton not rendered by a name? whether it's Yahweh or Jehovah, and they said, if we did that, correct, you're correct, uh, the, uh, the translators said, you're correct, the name should be there. But we have sunk, and then yeah. they, we have sunk. Listen yeah, so he says, well, we have sunk uh, two and a quarter million dollars something into this Bible. We will not sell it if we put Jehovah's name in it. That was their excuse. He says, we will not sell our Bible. Yeah. They want, it's about the, it's about the money. So this is a major translation that has been reviewed by Greek and Hebrew scholars, and uh, one one I've got his uh, his notes on his review said. One, 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 one. All my students. If you have any questions? I'd be glad to, to answer them. I, I've, I've followed you guys a long time. So. Oh yeah, abolitionists. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Ah. So anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go because maybe. Thank you, you for bringing him. that over. I want you to know who I am. Jerry I'm Jerry Holmes. Holmes. Okay. That's my phone number. That's well, my business line. I own a company in town here, and so oh, I okay. answer that a little bit different. But that's okay. my personal cell phone okay. that I have in my pocket. And, you know, you, you come up with any questions in the future? I've always got questions. <laughs> well, no, I mean, you know, we respect each other. Yeah, I, uh, I appreciate the respectful dialogue. Then just give me a call, and we'll, we'll just talk sometime. We can meet. And if I had your contact information, I could text you, not call. I don't call people. Okay. Uh, but I text people information, and I wouldn't mind doing that if you text. Mm -hmm. Do you do? I mean, yeah, yeah, I, I text. Is something you, okay, you yeah, know, I, text. I promise that I'm not going to be calling you up, but <laughs> you can call me up, though. Okay. And you can take a look at our website there. But if okay. you if you want to share your text with me, I would like to send you the review of this Bible by scholars at the University of Chicago. We say, uh, the one guy says, every student of mine gets this Bible. Hmm. Because we, and of course they compare it with other Bibles. Well, so thank you. Don't mind, and then I'll let you. Mr. Mr. Holmes, no, 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 now that I know your last name, Mr. Holmes. Yeah. Okay, Jerry. Yeah, right. Mr. Jerry, okay. And, and what is your contact for text? 316-737-5967. Uh, if you got any questions, I'd be glad yeah, to answer them. Yeah, I'm leaving right now, guys. Preacher's Corner here. That is 737 5967. 737 5967. 5967. Mm -hmm. And your name again? Nicholas Heald, H E A L D. Okay, very good. Nick, thank you. Good You've, been talk, great good. To, you've been great to talk to. I've talked to a lot of people. Not to argue. <laughs> we, got, we, got, we got no argument. <laughs> thank you, my man. Enjoy that. Thank you, Mr. Jerry. You said your name was Nick? 
Nicholas. Nicholas, hi, yeah. Allison, nice oh. to meet you. I just oh. wanted to thank you, and I just I bought this oh. inside, and I thought, you know, it might get a little warm out here, and I just wanted to oh. thank you for what you're doing. Oh, all right. I thank you for the water. Of course, yeah.